Okay, so let's say you've finished assembling your new PCB, you've got your STM32 on it, and you want to start programming it. So I'm going to take you through how to do that, what connections need to be made, and so let's get going. So this is one of my boards I made. Um, you see there's two STM32s on there. Uh, we'll just be using one today just to show how to connect to it and debug it. Uh, I also have these little um, uh, 1.27 millimeter pitch 10 pin headers, and they connect to the ST link, which is this device, which is the programmer for about 20 euros or $20, um, which enables you to program the STM32s and also do in circuit debugging, which is quite nice. Now you'll see this is a large header on this device here, so you need an adapter cable, which is available for $5, I think, and I'll link it in the description, but I've made this rather crummy job here, which actually converted down to this small uh, header. So you need that to plug into these headers, plus you also need to power the board. So you can't use the, uh, the ST-Link to power the board. Um, so I'm going to use one of these uh, USB connectors up here. So let me connect it up and then show you the end result. Okay, so I've got everything connected up now. You can see the ST-Link is connected via this rather dodgy looking adapter to this 10-pin 1.27mm SWD header, which is connected to this STM32F4 over here. Uh, you've got to watch out, this has two possible orientations, right, you can put it there or 180 degrees. Uh, make sure your pin ones match up. Um, I am also powering the board via this micro USB header. Remember, you can't power the board through the ST-Link. There is a VDD or VCC connection on this 10-pin header, but that's just a reference voltage for the ST-Link. Another thing you need to pay attention to is the boot 0 and boot 1 pins. So in general, when you're programming via SWD and this ST-Link, you want to pull the boot 0 and boot 1 pins down to ground via a pull uh, pull-down resistor. I've uh, mapped these to these little dip switches here, and I've put the boot 0 and boot 1 pins pulled down. Okay, so now once we've got all the hardware connected, uh, let's move on and actually program this thing. Okay, so now we're at the PC. And one utility I recommend you download is this ST-Link utility. It's available on the ST website, and it basically lets you flash and upgrade the firmware on your STM32 via uh, the ST-Link when it's connected. This is usually what I start with to check if I can actually talk to the device. So it's hidden in your folder when you, when you install it, so I have it on the C program files, ST Micro Electronics, and then the utility. And this is the program you want to open. So double click, and you get presented with this window. Uh, what you want to do, essentially, we just want to check if we can talk to the device. So you, we've got everything connected. Remember the ST-Link header, and we're powering the board. We go to Target, and then we click Connect. With any luck, you won't have to do any more. It'll tell you what device it thinks it's connected to. And in my case, I think it's an F405. It tells you what the flash size is, and it'll actually show you uh, if the flash memory has been written to, which it has in my case. So this is a great check to see that you first of all can talk to your ST-Link device via SWD, but also that you can actually talk to the chip on your PCB. So this is what I always do first of all, is check can I even just talk to the device. So this looks good. So let's move over to Cube IDE and see we how we can actually uh, program it. Okay, so we can do target, disconnect, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so another utility I recommend you download is the STM32 Cube IDE which is freely available on ST's website, and it combines STM32 CubeMX, which lets you select the peripherals and pinouts for your STM32 microcontroller, and it also includes a complete development environment, so you can program, debug, and flash firmware via the ST-Link onto your STM32 microcontroller. Uh, now, as, as I said, it's f completely free. There are alternatives, both free and paid, but I think this is just really great for the STM32 because it combines all the different features of selecting the pinouts, uh, having peripheral libraries available, and also being able to flash and debug the device. Okay, so I've downloaded the program. Um, I've got it open here, STM32 Cube IDE. So the first thing you want to do is go to File, New, and STM32 Project. Now we have to choose the chip where we'll be running on. And the one I'm using is an STM32 F405RG T6, which is right here. So select it and uh, press next. Now we need to select a project location, project name. I'm just going to call this STM32 test. I generally just write my code in C, and all these options are fine. So click next. 
um, so at least often co copy any of the necessary library files and click finish. It'll start um, building a project for us and once that has completed we will now see this view. So we'll see a view of our package and the chip. And now it's time to actually configure this device and select which peripherals and what pins we'll be using. So what we definitely need is if we go to system core and then go to sys, we want to enable the debug options. So we want to enable serial wire debug. I don't have an SWO trace on this board, uh, which you can use for printf and so forth. So I'm just going to be selecting serial wire. If you did have an SWO trace fed out onto the 10 pin header, you would select this option. So I'm going to select, select serial wire and you see it enables these two pins over here, the data pin and the clock pin. And that means we can actually use the ST-Link pin uh, to debug this device. I also have a crystal oscillator connected to uh, this chip, which I'm going to enable in the RCC section. It's a high speed external crystal oscillator. There we go. Now in the clock configuration, um, my cr external crystal oscillator is at 25 megahertz, so this is already correct. If you had a 16 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator, for example, you'd type that into here. Then I select HSE because otherwise it uses the internal crystal oscillator. And then I will also use the PLL clock. Um, now you see some things have turned red here. To fix that, I just want to run it at my maximum frequency, which is this H clock, and press enter. It'll look for and try and solve to make sure all clocks are set up correctly. This might take a bit of time. Sometimes this is a bit fuzzy, uh, uh, fussy, but it seems like it's found a solution. Okay, so now we're using the external oscillator I have on the board, via the PLL clock, and we're running at the maximum frequency, and everything looks fine. Now we can go back to the pinout and conf configuration. So these are the two main things we need to set up. If you don't have an external crystal, that's fine as well. You can just use the internal one. But this is usually where I start with. So serial wire debug and the crystal. Now we can worry about what we're actually interfacing with. So I, I'm going to pull out the schematic here of the board. And this is the SDM32 F4 I've connected to. And here's the pinout I'm using. So just for sake of simplicity, simplicity um, let's just flash an LED on and off. So I've got four LEDs connected here. And one is on PV12. So let's use that. So PB12 is over here on the bottom right. I click on it. So you can either click on it here or you can um, enable peripherals on the left side here. But if it's just a GPIO, I usually just click on the pin, select GPIO output, and there we go. Now, it's not a very interesting label here. So if you right click, enter user label, I'm just gonna type in uh, LED uh, status, for example. Press enter and now it's been assigned. And so for this example, this is uh, enough because we're just going to be blinking LED. But of course, if you have other peripherals, you can then select, for example, if you want I squared C, click that and it'll label it. Okay, so once you've done that, press Control S to save and it'll generate all the code. So it'll generate all the, the libraries you need to get the system running. So once it's done that, it, it should normally switch into that view. But if it doesn't, go into the core folder source and main.c and you see it's generated all the main code for us main.h and so forth it's got a there we go it's in initialized the gpios and so forth okay and here we have our while one loop okay so what we need to do is we need to find what it's actually called the, the port of the led and also uh, the pin name. So let me just copy these two things here. Because you want to toggle the toggle the LED, I'll just type in L GPIO toggle pin, and then it'll want the port, and it'll want the pin. Now you can look this up on, online. But I just happen to remember this, and we want to um, also give it a delay, otherwise it will flash at a speed we can't see. So let's say. Uh, 500 millisecond delay. And this is a really simple program, so every 500 milliseconds we're turning the pin uh, either on or off, which will turn the LED either on or off. Okay, so you can press build debug up here, the little hammer, and this is, it'll build the whole libraries and tell you if you have any errors in your code. 
So this is what I always do first, is just click on build debug. It'll tell me if I have any errors. Once I'm happy with that, you click on this little bug over here, and that's actually going to then flash the STM32 via the ST link. So let's click on that. So the first time you click on this bug, you're actually going to have to set up the launch configuration. And this will bring up this window. And this will only happen uh, the first time. You can change this, of course, afterwards, but the first time you need to set it up. And usually the default settings are fine. Uh, if you go through here, if you are using the serial wire, um, the SWO pin to use, for example, printf via the trace, uh, you'll have to change some settings here. Uh, you'll have to enable the serial wire viewer and type in your core clock and so forth. But for this example, this will do. So if you just go through, everything is pretty much fine. You can just click apply and then press OK. Now it's going to start trying to connect to the debugger. It'll look for it automatically. As you can see, everything seems to be working fine. So if we scroll back up in this console view here, you can see it was trying to connect to the debugger because we've connected the ST link via USB. It's found it. You don't have to um, initialize or do anything else with it. And it's also recognized what device it is and how much flash it has. Uh, then it's tried to program the device. And it seems to have downloaded and verified the flash memory successfully. So that's looking good. You can see it'll set a breakpoint here. So it's actually currently paused this program. And the way you get it to run is just click on resume up here. And now the program is running. Now what you can do is either just press the suspend button to pause and it will stop wherever the, where the, where the program count is at the moment and press resume to resume. Or you can set breakpoints and you can do that wherever you want to set breakpoints and just go in this little blue bar over here, double click and it will stop. You see it's paused and now we've paused on a toggle pin. And now what is really nice about this ST link, you can see the all the variables or the registers that have been set. Now if you're happy to continue, you can remove the breakpoint and then just press resume. And I'll show you that this is working by switching to my other camera and then just filming the LED blink. And that pretty much concludes it. Okay. And press terminate if you're done. Okay, just as proof that it really is working. Uh, here we have the STM32 um, F4 and that's the LED that's blinking uh, every half a second. And this is the program we just used to program it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention here is quite nice, the build analyzer shows you how much fla uh, flash and RAM you're actually using, which is really useful. Okay, so I hope that helped and let me know if you have any questions um, in the comments. Thanks a lot.